Here's four swift tricks and shortcuts to show and hide the vector scope in Final Cut Pro. I'll also remove the mystery of these confusing video scopes so you can use them like a pro. And stay till the end and I'll show you how to balance color with a scope in seconds flat. Let's scope it out. There's a few different ways that you can show and hide the vector scope. The first one is to go up to Window and then go to Workspaces and select Color and Effects. Or you can press the shortcut Control Shift 2. That opens up the Effects browser over here in the bottom right. And then it also opens up these four graphs here. And this is your vector scope. And then to go back to your normal view, go to Window, Workspaces and select Default or just press Command 0. Another way to see the vector scopes is to go to View, Show in Viewer, and select Video Scopes. Or go over here in the upper right corner of your viewer, click on View, Video Scopes, or even faster, just press Command 7. Command 7 will show the scopes and hide the scopes. Let's make these scopes bigger by dragging to the left on this window. Coming up, I'll show you what all these symbols mean and how to use the vector scope, but first, let's change the layout. You can change the layout of these video scopes by clicking on View, and as you can see, you can select different layouts. You can have two scopes at once, one scope, three, four, it's really up to you. You can also change uh, some display options. You can select a vertical layout and it'll put the scopes below your viewer, like so. I personally like this look better. You can also turn off these guides here. So if I click that, you'll see that the numbers and the guides on the graphs went away. Those are useful, so we'll keep those on. Or you can even go monochrome with your graph. You can also change the intensity of your graphs or your scopes. We can turn it down or way up. Let's go right about there in the middle. Let's focus on the vector scope right now. So I'll just select a layout of one. And then to bring up the vector scope, I'll click on this scope button here and I'll select vector scope. The vector scope shows the color in your video in a circular graph. It shows your colors or hues here in the middle. And as they move out towards the edge, that's the saturation. So in the middle here would be no saturation and then on the way out to the edges would be full saturation. The vector scope shows at a glance your hue and saturation, and you can use that to quickly identify how maybe two different video clips differ, and then you can use the vector scope to get them in line and look the same. If we click on the scope button, we have a few different options here, and we get the same ones if we right click on the vector scope. Scale is used for broadcast, and you use these to set for when you have bars and tone in your video and need to match at a certain level. Vector and mark rotate the reference point. We'll keep it at vector. This line right here is the skin tone indicator. All human skin tone falls on this line, no matter your skin color. You can turn that on and off by selecting hide skin tone indicator or show skin tone indicator. So we have our primary colors represented with red, blue, and green, and then our secondary colors with yellow, magenta, and cyan. These boxes are used in broadcast and when calibrating video signals using bars and tone. Are you digging this video so far? If you're nodding your head enthusiastically, will you please give it a thumbs up so other people will find this video? Coming up, I'll show you how to use the histogram and waveform scopes for perfect color balancing. All right, now let's take a look at a histogram. I'll click on the scope button and select histogram. A histogram shows us how much color or how much light is in a video clip. I'll click on the scopes button and I'll select Luma. Luma describes the brightness of a video. So you'll see here, I have some dark spots down here in the video and then some light spots here. So this dark is probably representing this section of the video. And then our light section is the waves, right? The white waves crashing down. You can use Luma to compare two different shots and try and match their exposure. And we can tweak the exposure of a video and see it change here as well. I'm gonna open up the inspector. If you don't see it open on the right here, click on these sliders and then click on the color inspector and then click on exposure and watch what happens to the histogram as I bring all of the exposure up. It moves to the right and then if I bring it down, it moves to the left towards the shadows. 
You can also use the histogram to see the colors. Click on the scope button and select RGB overlay. This shows us the different colors in the video, the red, the green, and the blue. And then where it overlaps, where there's the same color, it shows a mix of them with this kind of white color here. And this is a shot of the ocean, which is blue. And as expected, we see a lot of blue in the video. We can also look at those colors, red, green, and blue separately in the red, green, blue parade. This helps us identify any color tints to the video. For example, let's say we added a bunch of red to this. You'll see the red start to move over to the right and the waveforms change a little bit. And we can see we have a red tint to our video. You can also look at each channel or each part of your video one color at a time. You can see all of the red at once, or the green, or the blue. And you'll use these to help balance your color and match the color of other shots in your video project. Let's take a look at the waveform. Click on the scope button and select waveform. Waveform will show us the luma of a video, how bright it is, the chroma of a video, that's our different color, our hue, and then the intensity of those colors. This first one is called the RGB Parade and shows us our different colors and their intensity. This is really helpful to compare the RGB levels between two clips and make sure that they're matched well so that your video looks smooth as it plays along and doesn't jump from color to color. We can also take a look at that information overlaid on top of each other. So now the red, green, and blue are all together in one graph. And again, we can look at each channel individually if we need to. We can also look at the luma, which is the brightness of the image. You wanna try and keep that somewhere between zero and 100 here. So we're doing pretty good here. We can use the RGB parade in the waveform to quickly balance color. Take a look at my shirt and my skin. You can kind of tell it's got a blue tint to it. And we can see also that the blue is elevated a little bit here as well. So we can look at this graph and try and balance the three colors so it looks a little bit better. In the color inspector, I'll go to my color board and I'll click and drag on this global value. I'll bring it over and I'll come down a little bit, pulling the blues out. Now see if I go way down, you can see a big difference or way up. I just wanna adjust a little tiny bit to bring that blue down towards the bottom here at the zero to match the red and the green. Let's take a look before and after. So you can use the waveform to quickly color grade or color correct. So as you can see, these scopes are great for balancing color or tweaking the look of your image. A lot of times you'll be using scopes to change the skin tone in your video. My friend Chris made a video, How to Change Skin Color in Final Cut Pro. You should check it out.